All right, so now I'm approaching the Army Golden Knights. I'm going to go over and get an interview with them. Also, um, we're made aware that this particular um, air show, we will not be able to get in the plane. It's a smaller plane, but potentially at the Chicago Air Show uh, as a media uh, representative, I might be able to uh, take a flight inside and actually get some documentation of how they operate in the air. We'll have to wait till Chicago and see. You can see I'm preparing their shoots. I am in an honored position. I'm with the Army Golden Knights parachute team, and I actually get to get close enough to actually talk to these guys. They're preparing their shoots, and right now I'm with one of these gentlemen here, and he is going to introduce himself at this time. Good morning, everyone. I'm Staff Sergeant Nahu Ramirez. I'm a Golden Knight on the black demonstration team on the United States Army parachute team, the Golden Knights. Okay, and I was talking to you earlier, and you mentioned potentially at some point the media, it, it, well, let me ask you like this. It's not uncommon for the media to accompany you in the plane, correct? Not at all. So usually we travel in our bigger aircraft with it, which is the Dash 8 aircraft. Uh, today we have the UV-18 Viking Twin Otter. So because it doesn't require a crew chief in the rear, um, we can't allow media personnel to come. But usually on our bigger aircraft we have our two pilots, we have our crew chief, and then we have all the demonstrators. With all this personnel and the crew chief in the rear, we allow media riders to partake in uh, rides. We go up from surface area to up to 12,500, and they get to take the best shots of the jumpers just exiting the plane. Now, okay, for me, one of the shots I would like to get is, like if I was over the Gary Airport. Uh, now, well, actually, let me ask this first. Like, when the media accompanies you, are they accompanying, accompanying the whole trip. Like if you were going, if this was Chicago Air Show, would, they, would we be in your company from Gary all the way to Chicago? Yes, so we are actually doing the Chicago Air Show from this air, uh, airport in about two weeks. Uh, the, air, the plane might be stationed over there, but yes. Once the jumpers uh, get all the equipment ready and we actually get on the aircraft, the meteorites come on with us. So they're experiencing the takeoff, the whole duration of the show flight, which is about 30 minutes up there. And then they safely return back to the airport where they started from. Now that's where I was going with this conversation for myself. I'm a freelance photographer. This is actually my first media event. Um, I'm very, uh, feel very blessed to be in you guys' company. Thank you for your service. Um, as a fellow law enforcement, I can just uh, relate a little bit, but uh, I, I really appreciate that. And the, the, uh, what I would like if I ever get the opportunity, is I would like to get a shot. I don't know what it looks like from the sky, yeah. but you know, getting the landscape of uh, Gary Airport with you guys coming out. So how close would we be able to be towards the exit point? Towards it. So usually on the Dash 8, you, the meteorites get to stay in the very back, right next to the jump door. Yes. So usually one lucky, individual gets to sit right on the on the right side of the jump door and they can just if they have a huge camera lens they can point it out and they get like the best that's going to be me I, i'm going to make it happen okay now if you would i'd like to talk uh, you know i saw you guys earlier you're getting your your um uh, excuse my term now you're getting your parachutes ready ready if you could kind of explain some of this procedure here okay so we have here our demonstration parachutes which we are able to land pretty much anywhere in in tight areas, um, we require 100 by 100 square feet, and we're designed to land, like we're all trained to land on a target the size of a dinner plate. It's a little wow. orange circle with a black dot in the middle, and we're able to put our feet right dead center. So usually yes. we can land almost anywhere as long as the obstacles are, you know. How does wind affect you? So usually when we take off, we have these things called streamers. Um, it's like some sort of paper, crepe paper. So at 2,000 feet, we throw that. What that does for us is it, it allows us to see where they drift. So that kind of like um, takes place. So you, 
that takes place in the parachute. So like if we were to open our parachutes and do absolutely nothing, we want to see where that drift would actually take us. So before we even jump out, we throw the streamers and they kind of give us a reading of what the winds are doing, what location, how strong they are. On top of that, the pilots are actually taking all the wind readings from their um, instruments uh, that come in through the PL tube, you know. So a lot of a lot of math and numbers are involved. Okay, good. Um, and then your helmets now on the top, is that for like if you guys wanted to video or is it is it just for video or is there other accessories that you could mount on there? No, so usually uh, those top mounts are uh, just GoPro mounts that we use. All of us try to jump a GoPro almost every single show. A couple of us have 360 GoPros now, which allows us to take the whole aerial footage and it's beautiful. Um, if you want to take a closer look here, so for instance, our helmet, it also has a digital altimeter on the side. If you could turn it into the yeah, sunlight phone. Right yes. here. Yep. So we have an audible altimeter that we we could hear. So we have elevations on our um, that beep to us. So for our 500, it goes off. If it's a 300, it goes off, you know. And we also, on the chin strap, we have a strap down right now. We have a wrist altimeter that goes on our wrist. So that, that way we can actually see it while we're in free fall. We're, we're looking at it and seeing, oh, we're at 4,000. It's time to deploy the parachute. We're yes. at 1,000. It's time for us to come in. What would be the lowest height you could be? safely to, to, to our lowest height is 2000 so okay. if there's ever any clouds that limit us from going all the way up to altitudes 6000 12000 you know if the clouds are at 3000 our team leader makes a judgment call where maybe we'll get off we'll get out at 3000 right underneath the clouds or the bare minimum we can get out is 2000 when you when you say bare minimum so if you um release yes. at 1500 no, so with bare minimum 2,000, like we're... Well, what, I mean, what I'm getting at is is if you have a complication uh, okay. and you can't release at 2,000, is there is there a way to survive that? Gotcha. So, yes. yes. Um, I think what you're, the question we're asking is like our lowest deployment altitude for like an emergency, right? Yes. So we actually have two parachutes. Our main parachute is located in the rear, and then our reserve parachute is located up front. Um, if we do happen to say we open our parachute at 4,000 or 3,000 feet, we actually do have a malfunction. Something's going on. Our lowest altitude that we're allowed to like make a decision is 1,800 feet. Uh, 2,000, wow. 1,800 feet. That's the lowest like we know. Hey, you have to do something. Yes, we have to release that main parachute. It's got to go away, um, and we can deploy our reserve. Okay. And have you ever had to do a reserve? No, but. We actually do a demonstration. We don't have the parachute out today, but usually we dis we demonstrate the cutaway, which is what we call it. We dis uh, demonstrate the cutaway maneuver to the American public. So one single jumper puts on a parachute that has a er, uh, parachute container that has three parachutes in it. So he gets out, he opens his first parachute, releases one side. So now, and this guy's also wearing smoke on top of that, so mm -hmm. people can see it. You know, yeah. um, this guy's spinning uncontrollably at about 90 miles per hour. So he can't land that parachute. Um, so what he has to do is release the second side so he goes back into free fall and then opens the second main parachute. So that, yes. for the American public, simulates what would happen if we actually did have an emergency. Yes. Okay, and in, in training, I'm, I, yes. I take it you do simulations? Yeah, for of... training, we do that. And then um, every now and then, like I said, we, we bring that that uh, maneuver out to the American public. Um, maybe we'll do it this weekend. We mm -hmm. don't really know yet. It's, okay. up, it's up to the team leader. We have a variety of maneuvers that we have in our back pocket, um, depending on what the team leader wants the crowd to see. As an enlisted, yes. how does a person, an enlisted personnel, put in for this type of job or put in for this type of, um, if, you know, to be able to do this type of uh, flying? Gotcha. So first of all, you have to be you know, active duty military. Um, we actually had someone from the Air Force come and try out for us. After he made it successfully on the team, he transferred over. So that you can't cross over from different branches. But you need a minimum of 75 jumps, and that's waiverable. We require 100, but if you manage to get 75, uh, free fall jumps out in you know, whatever training, if you do halo training um, in the military, or if you just happen to get your skydive license recreationally. Uh, we require 75 jumps. As long as you have a clean military and civilian record, you can come and try out. Um, every tryouts start roughly at the end of August, if not first week of September. We actually have them starting pretty soon. You can just you just submit a packet. Um, our team members review the packet, make sure you're a good candidate. You come on in, and you're with us for eight weeks. Well, not directly for the team, but you're with Golden Knights um, during the selection for eight weeks. Where you're just training constantly every single day. You're up at okay. five in the morning. You go to bed at 